Nintendo is undeniably one of the most iconic video game franchises of all time. That is if you don't look at their rather dark background, but you know, Nintendo's great, Mario's great, Zelda's great, Donkey Kong, Kirby, Metroid, Star Fox, Animal Crossing, Pikmin, Pokemon, it's all great. And Nintendo knows this better than anyone else. So with the claim to fame all of these franchises have gained, Nintendo would be stupid not to make sequels of them. But how many sequels does it take for it to be too? Too many sequels. How many sequels before even your grandma will be like, cut the shit Nintendo? How many sequels before the death of Nintendo sequels? Now before I get into the origins of Nintendo sequels, I just want to preface that this video is not going to be me dogging on sequels, and if anything, some of my favorite games, whether that be Tears of the Kingdom, Super Mario Galaxy 2, or even Wii Sports Resort, are all sequels. With that being said, you'll see why this video is called The Death of Nintendo Sequels as it progresses, but anyways, as far as we're concerned, the year is 1985, Back to the Future just came out, houses were actually kind of affordable, and every child was begging their parents for Nintendo. Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay, the hat's coming back on. The hat is coming back on. 1985 and the years to follow were obviously huge for Nintendo, with their two biggest breakthrough titles being Super Mario Bros. and Legend of Zelda. While everyone loves to talk about how revolutionary these games were, no one really talks about or even knows about the sequels to these games. After Super Mario Bros., there was Super Mario Bros. and the Lost Levels, which I mean, come on, that game is designed with the intention of psychologically harming you. And then after that, there's Super Mario Bros 2, which is definitely enjoyed by those who played it, but at the end of the day, the Mario hype train wasn't really ignited until Super Mario Bros 3 came out, which was an entire three years after the initial release of the first game. Then there's Zelda 2, the adventure of Link, in which the formula presented in the first game is completely changed as we are now presented with this platformer side-scroller as opposed to our classic top-down adventure. Now, my mother isn't an avid gamer, but if there's something she is well-versed in, it's the Legend of Zelda, because she really Religiously played her NES growing up, and to this day she will boot up the second quest of the original Legend of Zelda after work, but guess what? She thought that Link to the Past was the second Zelda game, and that right there was the biggest, um, actually, moment I've ever had. The point I'm trying to make here is that sequels weren't really all too successful at the beginning of Nintendo's lifespan from both a numbers perspective, but also from an impact perspective in comparison to their predecessors or other competition. But when the SNES came out, shit started to get real. We got Link to the Past, Super Mario World, Donkey Kong Country, and all of these other franchises that were really starting to get their shine in the 90s. The franchises got even better when the Nintendo 64 came out in 1996 because we were introduced to 3D. While less people played the N64 in comparison to the SNES, Game Boy, or even the NES, there's no denying the fact that this console had some absolutely legendary titles and sequels. But by the time the 2000s rolled around, Nintendo kind of found themselves in hot water. You see, after the release of the Ooh. NES, Nintendo was slowly falling out of the mainstream with each console getting less and less sales. This wasn't to say that the games were getting worse or that the consoles were dog shit, it was more so the fact that Nintendo now had more competition. Xbox was on a rise, PlayStation 2s were going crazy, and there were now all sorts of consoles and games to play, meaning that Nintendo was no longer the forefront of gaming culture. The sequels they were releasing during this time were great, but at the end of the day, their sequels during this time were lucky to even get close to the amount of recognition as their predecessors, and these sequels certainly weren't going to bring an entirely new wave of Nintendo fans. But in 2004, Nintendo would enter its golden years. Well, the wait is over. This is Nintendo DS. With the announcement of the DS, Nintendo was once again ready to revolutionize the video game industry, and with the massive success of the console, they had finally brought in a new wave of players. Not only did it introduce touchscreen capabilities before the iPhone, yeah that's right, fuck you Steve Jobs, but it was the first time that you were actually able to play games with people from around the world as opposed to being restricted to solely local play. You can now play Mario Kart whenever you wanted, and with whoever you wanted, you could play Animal Crossing, Pokemon, or even Grand Theft Auto Ch Chinatown Wars whenever you please. Not to mention that the DS had all sorts of other neat features that made it the iconic console it is today. But in 2005, things would get even crazier. You want a revolution? Well, we've got one.
With the release of the Wii, Nintendo had truly cemented itself at the top of the industry with two revolutionary consoles back to back. With the DS, you could play it anytime and anywhere, while with the Wii, just about anyone could play it, especially with games such as Wii Sports. Not to mention that the Wii introduced backwards compatibility, which sort of obsoleted the previous consoles, but at the same time, it definitely drew more people into buying the Wii. The moral of the story here is that the Wii appealed to just about anyone, whether it be the hardcore gamers out there, or whether it be your 10th grade geometry teacher. While the DS, Wii, and even 3DS were all massive success, massive success, success, it's around this time in which sequels started to become interesting to say the least. Let's take a look at New Super Mario Bros. This game is a great recreation of the classic 2D Mario that we all love and enjoy. Sure, it follows the same formula, but it improved almost every single aspect from its predecessors, and it was nice to have a taste of 2D Mario since it had been around a decade since the last title. Then we get New Super Mario Bros. Wii, which is admittedly very similar to the DS game, but you know what, there were definitely some changes, with the biggest one being that there was now 4 player multiplayer, which is one of the sole reasons as to why so many people, including myself, have such fond memories of the game. But then they released New Super Mario Bros. 2 on the 3DS, and it's like, okay, this is kind of getting stale now, and then they made a sequel to the Wii. For every golden year, there's a dark one, and with the release of the Wii U, shit got dark for Nintendo. This was not only their worst performing console, but it once again solidified the fact that sequels are dying out. They would go on to make another new Super Mario Bros game, and then they made new Super Luigi U. Like what the fuck were they thinking? But honestly, there were so many great titles on the Wii U that never really saw the light of day because the console itself just wasn't it. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze has got to be one of the most unique 2D platformers I've ever played, and it was a great sequel to Country Returns, we got Pikmin 3, which was so good that Nintendo fans started rioting for Pikmin 4. And then we got Super Mario 3D World, which completely expands upon Super Mario 3D Land, and is in my opinion one of the most underrated Mario games, and among these titles there were a lot of other great games thrown into the mix. But once those golden years started to fizzle out, I think people really just wanted something new again, which is a lot to ask for, but Nintendo had set the bar super high, so the only way they were going to reel in more people was to once again raise the bar, which is something that a sequel won't accomplish. Let's take a look at Wii Sports Resort. This game is by far way better than Wii Sports, as there is simply so much more to do, but if you look at the sales, it doesn't even compare to Wii Sports. And I know what you're gonna say. Oh! But Anto, the original Wii Sports, it came with every Wii. Okay, but at the end of the day, Wii Sports would have still dominated the market over Wii Sports Resort, goddammit. Or if you look at Super Mario Galaxy 2, you'll see that it only has about half the sales as the original game, even though it completely expands upon a lot of the concepts within the first game. In fact, the sole reason Super Mario Galaxy 2 exists is because they couldn't fit all of their ideas into the first game, but if they wanted to see more success, they should have just took those ideas and funneled them into a new Mario game game, and hell, if they are going to make a sequel, then why the hell did they not expand on the story? I mean, Super Mario Galaxy is one of the few Nintendo games that actually has a good story, but anyways, I digress. The point I'm trying to make is that if Nintendo makes a sequel to one of their games, it is, in most cases, not as revolutionary as the original title. While some companies are able to just pump out sequel after sequel, Nintendo is not like those other companies. I mean, sure, they have their foundational franchises like every other video game company, but the games within those franchises seem to only perform when something new or iconic was added to the equation. Jimmy, are you ready? No, no, no. Are you ready? Yeah, no, I'm freaking out. This is not the this Switch. This is the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Now when I say the death of Nintendo sequels, I don't mean, oh, there's never gonna be sequels again, or oh, nobody wants sequels anymore, because at the end of the day, sequels will always be a part of Nintendo, it's just kind of a no-brainer. But with the release of the Nintendo Switch, I would argue that everyone's attitude towards Nintendo has drastically shifted. Sure, there are more people out there who are still begging for the next Super Mario Galaxy game or the next Metroid game, but it seems as if a lot of people's energy is more focused on what the next big thing is going to be. With the release of the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo was back in the game, not only console-wise, but 2017 might honestly be one of the most iconic years Nintendo has ever had. And that's because they took the franchises we already adore and gave them the groundbreaking love they deserve. We got Breath of the Wild, which was actually released on the Wii U first, but shh don't fucking snitch. And we got Super Mario Odyssey, which if you couldn't tell, I'm quite a big fan of that game.
What's funny about these two titles is that a lot of people were actually skeptical about them because they strayed so far away from their traditional roots. But I would argue that the reason for their success is because they strayed away from those roots. Breath of the Wild may not have included your classic dungeons, but it was an open world masterpiece in which you could play the game however you want. Oh, you want to go fight Ganon as soon as the tutorial's over? Then go fight Ganon as soon as the tutorial's over. Or what about Super Mario Odyssey? I mean, sure, this game has a bit more of a linear structure as you traverse from kingdom to kingdom, but once again, you have a lot of freedom when it comes to what you want to do, not to mention that there is a bunch of unique kingdoms, and the capture mechanic on its own could probably supply two more sequels. You could say that sequels such as Splatoon 2 saw more success than their original counterpart, but that's because it was on a console that had way less sales, and plus, if you look at Splatoon 3, my point once again stands. As the Switch's lifespan has raged on, we not only see Wii U games get their shine, but we also see all of these massive titles dominate their respective franchises. Kirby? Dominating. Pokemon? Dominating. Mario Kart? Dominating. Smash Bros? Dominating. A 2D Mario game that's actually unique? Dominating. But now it's almost 2024 and the Switch's lifespan is coming to an end, so what will the future look like? Well, it's hard to gauge, but I think that if they continue to give the franchises the love and care they deserve, I have no doubt that Nintendo will stay at the forefront of the industry. With that being said, the next console they release will be crucial because if they have another Wii U moment, then things could turn south very quickly. And they better not fuck up when the next year of Luigi comes around.